everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cool circular, kind of, it splits open, so maybe a circular split bag. I'm not sure exactly what to call it yet, but I had the idea and it's come out really, really well, and I'm so pleased with this, and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. It is easy to make, so there's lots of stages to it. It won't take too long to do, but there are stages. As long as you follow them, you will be able to make this. And I've hopefully done the tutorial so that it doesn't matter if you've got slightly a bigger size circle or a smaller size, you should still be able to, you know, make it work for you. So these papers, some of you may have recognised from my What Did I Get? And this was from the lovely Happy Mail that Kimmy sent me. I'll show you the paper pack in a moment. But basically you just, there's Velcro on both so you can undo either one. And then it just splits open and you can fill it with whatever you want. Now I may well put a little disc just to cover these pieces it was kind of the handles were you know the last thing I added so you know they could be tidied up if you wanted to but they're very easy to change um, it's really quite roomy so this would be really nice for maybe like a nice scarf or some you know a smaller piece of clothing like a t-shirt you could also you know obviously put lots of sweet treats in there jewelry you know lots of things all because it's circular doesn't mean that you can't fill this it's three inches deep so that you know again there is a lot of space in this it all locks in together I've really thought about this and um, try to any as I was making it little bits I want happy with then I you know I've gone back to them and I think I've yeah I think I've done it well so the little feet here as well I love this extra little piece you don't need to add these in obviously if you don't want to because you can just keep the bag flat like that you know when you're kind of storing it or you know whoever you give it to they can lie it down so you've got the pop of the silver all through it and then I've used the beautiful bright rosa butterfly dye and I've done four layers so you've got the pattern vellum then the green and the silver. So it's just a really nice full kind of topper there on the top. So yeah, I hope you like it and uh, I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Okay, so first of all, I'll show you the paper pack that I used for that one because I'm going to be using a different one for the next bag. But this is the Hydrangea Lawns and it's by Dress My Craft. I will try and find some links. So it's not something, like I said, I didn't get this. This was given to me. So I will see if I can find any links and I will share them in the description box below. But they're absolutely stunning papers and it is a thick, more of a cardstock this is. So um, yeah, you, you, I would say you want something thicker, but I'll show you how to change it if you don't, okay? So for today's one, I'm gonna be using the Happy You collection. So I've already gone ahead and prepped some of it because again, there's a few bits where there's doubles of everything. Now I have started to color my feet for this one, but they're a bit more orangey than I want. So I may well change them in the tutorial and I'll show you how to do them. But that's the color that they come. I got these from the works. Again, I'll link anything below, but they're great because you could just use your alcohol markers and, um, and yeah, color them whatever color you want. I've already done my butterfly topper for this one. And this is the, the die set here. So it's the Bright Rosa and it's the butterfly band. Again, I know some of you have already got this one and I'll share the links to it below because it is beautiful. And I've used it on a few now. I used it on my faceted gift bag as a really nice topper because it's just so big. But just look at all the layers you get. It's just beautiful. So that's that done. I'm gonna be using my X-Cut Circle Cutter, but you can use a dinner plate, side plate. There's some other cutting systems that I know some of you have as well. That was the pens that I used. Okay, other supplies before I go through all the measurements. I've used the Rose Gold Premium Mirrored Cardstock by Dovecraft. I've used the Glitter Card here. This is the Dovecraft. Again, it's non-shed as well. I will share all the links. And then this is the paper pack. So there it is, the beautiful Happy You by Dovecraft. It's amazing, love this one. Okay, so I mentioned that that other paper pack, it was more of a card stock. So I only had to cut it um, once with my circle cutter and I used it as it was. But because the Dovecraft is more of a paper, it's thinner, what I've done is I've already gone ahead and backed these with some white card stock. So what you want to do is if you're using your, your X-Cut cutter, you want it set at seven, okay? So these are seven inch circles. So when you go to decide you know, what you're gonna use, you need it to be as close to that seven as possible. It's better if you go slightly smaller for this tutorial. You can go, I'd say seven and a half would probably be the max that you would wanna go, just so that this will work for everybody. I may well do a larger one at another time and those of you that know what you're doing you may well find a way that you can you know make that work for you but this is going to be using a seven inch 
circle. So you want to cut four, you want to have two with your pattern paper for your front and back and then you want to cut another two because these are going to be to cover the inside. So if, I don't think I really pointed that out, but inside here I've actually covered inside so it covers up all the little joints. It's a really, you know, really well finished gift bag or gift box I think. So cut your two for your front and your back and then cut two more okay and cut them in half. Now when you're using your trimmer when I say cut in half you just want to line this up, pop it right on the top okay it doesn't matter you know whatever point hits the top and bring it along until this side here is lined up with three and a half okay and then that will cut it so you've got two equal sides whatever size you're using so whether you've gone slightly smaller to me or slightly higher you will need to find the halfway point and line this side up to that halfway point and cut it in half okay so whatever size you're doing just follow what I say to do and it will all kind of fall together the same way so two pieces in patterned and two pieces in another pattern or something to go inside cut the two for inside in half so you'll have four pieces okay and again that will all make more sense when we get to it and then I went and cut two more pieces of plain white 300 GSM cardstock and I stuck these on okay so they're much much stronger and to do that I used my easy stick I have mentioned this before it's a really good one for it dries solid it dries really really stiff and rigid so it turns your papers into you know a nice cardstock so I have used that in quite a two few tutorials and again um, I've got it on my Amazon storefront linked but I'll link it below as well otherwise the other good one is Colau as well which again you know is one of my favorites that dries really really stiff as well so it's a good way of turning paper into more like a grey board so, you know just so it's a bit got a bit more strength okay so then for the two pieces so this the splits I guess you want two pieces that are four by this is a four length okay I don't think 11 is going to do it. It may well do it actually. I didn't really check that. Once we go through the tutorial, you'll be able to see what I mean um, and then you can decide whether or not. But you, you may be able to get away with 11. But um, 12 is obviously fine, but I'm using A4, which is coming in about 11 and 3 quarters. So you want two pieces, like I said, that are four by that length. Then to decorate, you want two pieces of mirrored card in my case, which is two and a half by the same length, okay? And then my pattern piece is two, again, by the same length. Now this was 12 inches, I just cut it down because that is gonna go over there. Basically, you're gonna have this. So this is one half coming together. This will all make sense when we get to it. Um, so don't be alarmed by that in a minute. Then I've got all these extras here, which I'll go through the measurements, I think, when we get to it, because, again, I just don't want to kind of, yeah, throw all that at you right now. So the only bit of scoring you need to do is on these two pieces here, and it's along the four-inch side, and it's just two simple score lines. You're just going to score at half an inch and at three and a half. Okay, that's all the scoring we're doing. Okay, then you want to fold and burnish these score lines okay and also you can do it before you fold it might be a bit easier but you also want to curl it and you want to kind of do this now because it's harder to do it once we've cut all the little sides in so I'm just grabbing my bone folder there you can use a ruler but just make sure you get a nice kind of curve to it and you want to do that also then when you've done these pieces so I've stuck my two inch piece over the two and a half inch piece here okay so these are ready to go and now I can just again curl those pieces it's better to curl them and stick it down than to do it the other way because you'll end up kind of almost putting quite a lot of strain on the glue whereas if you've already got it curved once we stick that down you can see it's just going to stick perfectly into the shape that it already needs to be Okay, so now we want to do a little bit of cutting and the best way to do this is from one end you want to cut like that and that just to start off with. Okay, we want that flat start. Then from there you can just cut lots and lots of triangles. So it's like crocodile's teeth. I used to do this kind of crafting in primary school and uh, I know it's still done you know, a lot now. So you're just going along 
and doing that. Now you, you only want to go as far because, and this is where it comes down to depending on what length that you've got. So I thought if I do it this way, then it again, it should help everybody. So you want to, I've got about two and a half inches. Okay, I've left free. So just cut all the way along until you've got about two and a half inches left, okay? Okay, so that's now all ready. You need to do that twice so you'll have two pieces. Okay, don't worry about sticking that on just yet because I just want to make sure that we're getting it all in the right stages. So, okay, so now with your two main circles, okay, so you've got your ones to decorate inside. These ones are for our, our outside. You want to cut these in half. So I'm just going to, okay, so I'm just going to cut these. So again, just lining up the top there and make sure this runs at the three and a half marker. Okay, and keep the two together. So if you've got a pattern, keep the two together because obviously when it comes up, you want the pattern to join. So yeah, if you've got something that's really busy, just maybe put a number on the back of them or something so you know that they, they go together, they pair up. This is quite easy for me to obviously be able to, yeah, marry those up. So you've got your two circles like this, okay, and you wanna get one of your sides. And on one of the sides, you're going to have one of the fronts like this and then one of the backs okay because obviously that one will join at the back and this one will join at the front so don't worry about that for the minute just pick up one okay it really doesn't matter which one but I would say in fact it doesn't even matter about the direction because at this point we can still change all that around so all I'm going to focus on is my front one here now, the reason why I've only cut to that point is because I wanted to show you how you can cut this and trim this down dependent on what height, you know, what length you have. Now, when I said about using 11 inches, I don't think you would because I think the 11 is going to literally hit right at the end here and you need a little bit of this to be able to attach them together. So I think you do need either A4 or 12 inches. All right. So... Now when you've got it like this, you can lie your semicircle over it, okay, just roughly, you're not, you know, don't worry for the minute, I'm not sticking it right now, and bring it round, and I know that roughly I can actually continue to cut up to, like, here. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll mark a pencil mark, about there. So I'm going to carry on now and just cut the rest. So... Yeah, I wanted you to have your circles and everything ready because if you are doing maybe a six and a half, you'll be cutting up to a different point than me. So I hope by doing it this way, it allows people that don't have the same things that I have to be able to adapt it, you know, and yeah, make sure it all works out. So hopefully I'm making sense. And I'm still leaving the very last one because you want to make sure that you end with this same flat piece because obviously that's where you need that flat piece to stick right along there to get a nice join. So again, I can just stick that around. Actually, I've probably cut too far, but it's still gonna be okay. Yeah, that'd be fine. Right, so what we can do now is start adding our glue. So I'm just gonna add glue onto probably a quarter. You work around in stages, it's much, much easier rather than adding glue to all of it. So I'm just doing, I've just glued up to there and I'm still just gonna focus on that very first one and just squeeze it. Make sure you keep that straight piece here running parallel with that piece and just stick that right down. You want this to be flush with the edge. Just get that tacked in place. This is very quick um, drying glue so I don't have to hold it in place too long. And I'm just following the curve of that semicircle and inside I'm pushing all of those little teeth against that piece and you can see now already that's stuck and you've already got a really nice finish. Now if you have cut over that score line you really want to try not to but if you have and you can see some of your cuts here you could put decorative paper right over this whole piece to cover it up. So if you are worried and you think, oh gosh, I've got some of my, you know, you can see my cut marks coming in. It's still, you know, easy to be able to, to sort that out. So again, turn it over on its side and you can go in and really make sure 
that that is all stuck down and this is where once we've stuck it down this lovely pattern paper will sit in perfectly it is this the nicest fit because it's exactly the same size semicircle so again it covers all those teeth so if you do have a bit of you know maybe dirt or something from the glue and things like that don't worry because it's all going to be covered so once you've stuck that piece and you can just carefully just lift it up a little bit to the next one. Oh gosh I'm way too heavy with that glue there we go and just do again another kind of section just kind of shape you can pull this arch turn it over each time making sure that, that all really does stick down nicely Okay, so now I have a really neat kind of one half to my bag. Now with this piece here, all you want to do is just cut it away down like this. Just cut it out and because I've got a little bit of that triangle there. I'm just going to just tidy that off there. These snips are great for getting right in, just really tidying up those edge pieces there. So we want this lip because that's what we're going to use to attach one piece. Actually it probably won't be this one, this will become the top. Next I'm going to grab, so this is now where you want to make sure you keep all of your pattern pieces the same. So this one will go on to this one when we do it, okay, which will match with that one. So let's say this is the front, okay, so when that comes up it will be like this. So I'm going to put that to one side and then this is my back circle. So I'm going to grab this piece here, put that to one side. Flip it over, I'm not too worried which way it goes, and now that's going to go in there. Now it's kind of already in the shape that we need it to be, so this is even easier now. So I'm just going to stick all this one down. Okay, so that's that one, and again I'm just going to cut right along the front there and then just remove that. So that lip there will be this piece here. Okay, so we keep that one on, and then the next one, you don't wanna stick this on just yet. Okay, so, I got so excited making that one, I just started putting it together, and I didn't really think about the process too much until it was all done, and then I had to kind of think back again. So, but that is now all ready to go. So, again, just remembering I've got that one. Nope, that's not it, that's the back. So that one goes there, there we go and then that one will be on the back. So next we can grab this piece. We want to make sure this is at the top, okay, and yeah, because this piece here will become the bottom and that's going to stick inside there, okay. So again, I'm saying this because if you've got a pattern the certain way, this needs to be the top piece, okay. So again, I'm going to stick this down now, this one and this one, exactly the same way that I've done them. Again, each time you get to this bit, I've just poked it outside and just bring it around and just mark with a pencil where the end is, okay, just so you know what you're cutting up to and then you can just carry on the cut. Once you've got this one like this, you can just kind of eyeball along there and then you can just cut it before you even stick that side. So. There are easier ways to do it, obviously. I just want to make sure that you all know just how to adapt it really to different lengths because you have got that little bit. All that will happen if you go slightly smaller, like I said, if you do maybe like six and a half, is this will be longer, which is fine. It, 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 there's, you know, if anything, it might even be better having it a bit longer, but you don't want to go any smaller. It's just not going to work. But what I'm going to do this time, because this, dry, this glue dries completely dries, I'm actually going to add the glue to about half an inch all the way around because we're going to be covering it with that pattern paper even if you have got a slightly tacky glue it will just you know yeah, it won't do anything but it might be a bit easier so again you always stick make sure you don't start from the end with that extra bit always start from the end that was that you started cutting from so just stick that one on there and just kind of work it round and tack it on the top of that one. 
yeah, you might find that even easier again to stick it all in one go by putting the glue actually on the semicircle. Yeah, so it might get a little bit sticky and a bit messy inside. I mean, I've got some glue on my fingers, but like I said, it doesn't matter if the glue's tacky because you're going to be adding more glue to stick that over and see how nice and neat it all becomes inside. So, yeah, have a look, see what works for you. But hopefully I've just shared a few ways there to, you know, how we get this end result because ultimately you just want to make sure that you have two pieces, two halves, like semi-circles. Hold on, just get rid of this that are like this, one with the lip at the bottom and one with the lip at the top. But when they come together, because we are in a minute, we're going to stick that in. Once they join, it will all join, <laughs> your patterns will join. Okay, so there's my pattern joined there and my pattern on the back as well. So where decide at this point which is your bottom, because you could turn it around this way and have that. I'm really, really not bothered. I'm going to stick with this way because that's the way that I kind of went with at the beginning. So I'm going to stick with that one. So with the bottom, what you want to do is just score. So I'm going to use my metal ruler. Just try and score a line because it will help. So if you put the ruler over this piece here, okay, over the top, so it's right up to that. And then I'm going to grab my stylus and just score along that metal ruler. Okay, and this needs to be actually, that's another thing, it needs to be on the piece where you haven't got the pattern paper. So you may want to not put your pattern paper on either pieces until you've done this stage, okay? So that's another thing. And now you can fold it, but you'll find it won't go in properly. So you just want to take a little wedge off of each side like so. So yeah, I would say maybe don't, I had that prepared for the video, I would say don't put your pattern paper on yet, all right? Because then it won't matter what you're using. So I'm gonna just fold that in now and just burnish it, because you want this to be able to fold quite nicely. And again, back on itself as well, because it's gonna fold outwards. Okay, so now we've got this hinge. That is now gonna stick inside the bottom piece of this. But before we do that, we wanna stick all of these pieces inside just to keep everything nice and tidy. And it's easier to do, obviously, before we do that. Now, this is where I'm gonna use my Easy Stick again, because it does dry really nice and stiff. So I'm just gonna cover these ones. Okay, you just want to stick each one, just make sure that you get the outer edge lining up nice and straight with this edge here. You don't want to see any of it. And then if you go inside, obviously I don't want to put that on that glue, if you go in with your bone folder, you'll be able to get it right in. That is literally perfect. You can't get it any better because it's exactly the same sizes, but just make sure if you do for some reason have anything overhanging, you can go through and just trim that off. But now already, you can you see how straight that is compared to, look at this one here, that one already is just, yeah, it's gonna, well, it already is quite solid, but this one's just got a little bit of a bow to it, whereas this one's just completely straight now. So it does kind of really pull things together. So I'm gonna do that on all of the other three insides. Okay, so they are now all ready, so we can now get this piece stuck down. So I'm going to add my glue to the inside here, the underside, okay, and then you're going to stick it into this one here. Now you want to make sure, it is a little bit fiddly because you need to kind of keep it open <laughs> and stop it rolling. Let's pop that there and just you just want to get it tacked in there and then you can kind of, once it's <laughs> in there, you just want to make sure that the score line lines up perfectly with the bottom. See there? And then you kind of just push it together. And then that top one, once we cut it, will go inside. Okay, so don't worry. Don't worry at this point because it will all come together. You just really want to make sure that you get that nice and straight. Don't go over the score, score line. You don't want it falling inside this. It has to just line up perfectly. Um, maybe use something like this. So you can go in just to push down that tab. I'm going to go in with a ruler there as well. 
I'd say that's the fiddliest part. Okay, and then with this top piece, right now it looks like a Pac-Man. <laughs> if you, um, with this top piece here, because it's obviously quite thick, so I've already put my pattern paper on it. Obviously you can put the pattern paper on now, it's fine, but if you just cut off the actual score lines, and then that will wedge in there, like so, and you will get your closure. Okay, so now you can go in, I will stick this piece on, it will join from the bottom and then your overhang you can just trim off because if I open it up you will have about that much overhang. So get that stuck down as well in a second. Also then we've got these pieces, it's up to you now really what kind of stage or what steps you do these because it's yeah it, it really doesn't matter but these are going to go inside here okay and they just help again keep it keep the shape and stop this kind of sinking so again if I just push that in there all right so I've cut these so they are seven tall but because you've got the shape of the circle you do need to curve these slightly so just I kind of come down about one eighth of an inch and cut up to the center and then come down the other side again to about one eighth of an inch so now I've just got that very slight kind of arch. So again, from one eighth of an inch, come up around the top and then down again to about one eighth of an inch. So I am eyeballing it, but that will now sit in there and it won't catch. Okay, so you want to stick these on the same side on you know whatever one you choose so whether you choose to stick them on this one make sure you do the front one and the back the same okay so I'm going to stick to them both with the left and I'm just going to add glue to half just half of it because the other half is what's going to form that little lip just to keep everything nice and straight really and like I said to stop it sinking so I'm just going to pop that in and just have half of it hanging out. You want to make sure you keep it as much as of that seven inches as possible because again it, it just will help keep the shape of everything. If you're getting any kind of glue marks like I'm getting I will buff all of that off with some dry tissue at the end so don't worry about it really at the minute but now that will go in, that will go in and it will just help everything close. Okay you need to do the other side because it will make a big difference. And just make sure the bottom there as well. So again with this one, same half that you did the other piece. I mean also I guess at this point you could still decorate inside and you may want to add these first and then decorate because you could actually still go over this with the pattern paper so I didn't actually do that but you could easily, I was just trying to make sure that it's easy for people to, to decorate when you know it's not actually all put together but I guess it's still quite easy to be able to get in there just as we're doing now with these pieces so yeah I would say maybe don't decorate until this one I mean you can do one half because obviously these are only going on this one so again just sticking half of that over there so yeah it's not difficult but there are like I said there are just lots of steps it's just getting all those steps and cutting all these extra bits and pieces and stuff so okay so now that will all go in like this. Remember we've got our Velcro to go on, but you should now have a nice shape coming together. So now I'm going to stick this half on here. So starting from the bottom, I'm going to cover all of this bar about half an inch really from the, the top. Okay, start from the bottom, line it up with the other one. So uh, yeah, just stick that there for a while, make sure it all um, stuck well. Okay, so that one that overhangs, you don't want to do that one because that is part of the base. Okay, that's all part of the main shell, but that one you want to cut. So just make sure you're cutting the right one. Okay, and then these little side pieces, if you slightly just roll them inwards, not too much, just ever so slightly, it's just so they don't catch each time it closes. 
Okay, and then that is all going to close up like so. Okay, then I have these rose gold strips which are going to go there. So again, if you've got anything and you're thinking, oh, I really don't like the way that this is closing, this will cover it because you're only going to stick it over half. So this is half an inch by, I think it was just eight, whatever the width of my A4 was. You want it to be longer than the seven for the minute because I find it easier to cut it once it's stuck down. So what I would say is you want to stick these pieces, you're going to have two, one for the front, one for the back, you want to stick them on the piece that you haven't stuck the white, so you want to stick it on the opposite ones. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue along this side, because it's easy, because this is only half an inch, it's easier to put the glue onto that, and then just stick half of this over there, keep it nice and straight. Now I am sticking on this little foiled bits here so I'm hoping it's going to be okay. If you turn it in this way, oh that's come on, done, and um, you can make sure that you have covered half. I'd probably say as well with that easy stick is make sure you let it dry because mine's still a little bit tacky because obviously I'm doing the tutorial and it's just buckled a little bit when that's gone to close. It'll be fine but yeah you won't, not that I'm rushing but you will obviously have more time so just yeah do it in stages, make sure everything dries nice in between. And then this one on the back, again, make sure it's on the opposite side to where you stuck those pieces and just stick that one. And again, just look inside there just to make sure that you've got a nice overhang. So I'm just gonna let that all set for a minute. Okay, once you're happy, just close it all up and then with your scissors, you just wanna follow the curve of the circle and you'll get a nicer finish. Again this side here, I might use my bigger scissors, much easier to get in and just slightly as you cut it, slightly arch it just so that you do follow that kind of shape. Like so. Okay. Then you've got your little closure so this piece here is going to go there just to stop it obviously moving because you know it may well want to pop out, this will stop that happening. So what I've done here is I've used my, these are the Card Making Magic Christina Griffiths nesting rectangles, I've used the two smallest. So I die cut the very small one in rose gold and then the next size up in the white. And then these ones here are just from my nest of circle dies and the largest one is one and one eighth and the smallest one is three quarters of an inch I've just stuck them on top this piece also measures in case anybody hasn't got the same three quarters of an inch is the longer one by one inch and the little one in the middle is whoa, oh, <laughs> one two and three quarters by half an inch okay and then all I'm going to do is add some glue just there and I'm going to stick half of it on so I've got the other half overhanging there so again pop a little bit of glue there and this is just going to act as I just thought quite a nice like little buckle. So for these I have the 16mm Velcro brand, Velcro dots, 10, yeah 16mm. So I'm just going to take a pair off. Okay, like I said, I've done them on both. You don't have to. I just quite liked the thought that they were at least then both the same height. So just close it up. Okay, everything should slot in. I'm just worried, no, nothing's catching. And then stick it over the center, keeping it all nice and as lined up as possible. Okay, so that's now all done. And then I've got my butterfly, which I'm gonna to attach to the middle, because already that just makes such a big difference. But before I do that, just got some tissue here and I'm just going over my mirrored parts and you can see there just by buffing it off the glue just comes straight off and you get a nice shine again so just you know just carefully just buff it all off okay so now I'm going to stick that onto there and I think, okay and I'm just going to run a little bead of glue there just stick that in the centre. Okay, so I've just got my marker here. I'm going to go over with a brown. Now I know, obviously, it's rose gold, 
but when it hits the light and stuff it does look brown so I think hopefully with this with that kind of peachy orange already underneath it might actually come out okay see I think that that's going to go much much better so I'm just going to go and colour all of these in okay so now I've got the wooden ones I actually really like them I think they go quite well so now you want to stick them down so I've got my hot glue on and you just want to make sure that you get them like the same distance so I mean you don't want it so far apart that it's just going to go kind of flat so let me just stick them first and then it's a bit easier for me to explain so okay so that one is about three quarters of an inch down and from that middle fold you're looking at about two inches okay so you want to do that the same on the opposite side yep I'm happy with that and then if you flip it over you want to stick them exactly the same now but just again about three quarters of an inch down or just you just want to make sure it's all balanced really it's a bit hard to really explain but Okay, if I bring them up you can kind of see, so I've gone more towards the back, but they are all nice and straight. So now when you stand it up, ta-da, perfect, looks really, really cool, love it. So now we just need to add the handle, or you can keep it like that if you want. Okay, I've just had a look, and I don't really have a nice ribbon that I think, well, I, don't, I have lots of nice ribbons, I don't have a ribbon that I think is nice enough to go with this one, so I'm going to leave this as it is, but I will just quickly talk through if you want to add the ribbon so all you have to do is I used my pokey tool and I came down about again because it's on a curve at three and a half inches and I just in the center poked a hole and then I did go in with this lying it down on its side like that I was able to punch a hole with the hole punch this way if not just make the hole you know with this and then just I fed it through from the inside tied a knot brought it all the way around to the other side. Can you hear how this sounds? Because it's all dry, it has a much, much nicer sound to it. Um, so again, it will all obviously finish quite nicely. I've still got some glue on there as well. If you're working with mirrored cardstock as well, <laughs> yeah, it is a, a pain when you do get marks on it, but it'd be okay. Yeah, and my strap is about, how we look in here, so say that's 10, 20, plus the knot, maybe about 25 inches, but that's it with that, so if you do want to have it as a, a little bag, I do like it as a bag, but I think it does look quite cute, just as a little box as well, and you don't even have to add the feet, you might just want to keep it like that without the feet on it, so there's a few options for you, but I absolutely love it, I think it is so cute, it's so different, and I think you can make it work for so many different um you know occasions and, and things like that they'd look nice as um special kind of favors maybe for like a hem party if there was just maybe like like an intimate group of you you know maybe about 10 or something these would be quite nice to make and the only difference with this one is i added that strip and i think it does look nice with that it gives it more of that kind of luggage kind of look so that one hasn't got it there but it's not the end of the world but um yeah so there's two kind of styles that one's really shiny and then you've got that one there with that beautiful paper from Kimmy. So there is my circular split bag or something like that. I'm not too sure, but I hope you like it. I hope I've made it relatively straightforward to follow. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see your versions once you start making them. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.